Hello and welcome to episode three of Cottoning On. My name is Lorna and this is my podcast Cottoning On. In each episode of the podcast I am going to be talking about the things that I've been working on, anything that I've finished, I'm going to be talking about my fabric challenge which I've been doing and sharing inspiration that I've been finding all over the place that might be online, things that I've bought or just life in general. So let's get on with what I've been making. So in terms of active projects, I haven't got any dressmaking projects to show you this time. I've been back at work for a couple of weeks now. After I just filmed the last podcast, I'd had a break. And I often find that when I'm off work, I feel a bit more in the mood to do some dressmaking. And I just haven't been at the moment, to be honest. So my sweatshirt from last time is still at the same stage. It's also been incredibly warm the last couple of weeks here. So the last thing that I really want to do is be pressing seams and doing things that just make you even hotter. One day last week it was 33 degrees, which is really uncomfortable here. And particularly, um, I know a lot of Americans can never believe it, but we don't have air conditioning, which means it is super uncomfortable, especially at night. So no dressmaking update this week, but I do have some knitting and crochet project progress. First of all, there is my Dahlia Stripe blanket this is a pattern by attic 24 which is available for free on the blog after i filmed the last episode i used the progress keepers that i showed last time um, i placed that here so i'd done the four stripes in claret and lipstick and you can see i haven't done loads more but it has more oh, i suppose actually i have i've done now done let's count 11 stripes and introduced the third colour. So the third colour that I've introduced is called tomato. These are all style craft double knitting. My gauge is still a little bit off like it was last time. It's still a little bit wider but I think some of these stitches are a little bit shorter. It doesn't look quite as big and I think I am going to have been weighing the ball every so often. I think I am going to have enough. So I'm doing the colour wash version. There was a random stripe, but um, I'm, I like how this is going. This is using um, treble crochet in UK terms and um, a spike stitch as well in treble crochet. But I really like, it's perhaps, the, the join isn't as subtle as I thought it might be. It, on camera, it does look pretty accurate actually. Um, so that's my first project. Um, this has been a good one to do when it has been warm because it's not too big on my lap so it's not making me too hot. So that is my first project. My second project is also crochet. This is my Tropicana blanket that I shared last time. Again, after the last episode I placed this cute strawberry I need to focus on my face rather than on the so there we go the strawberry stitch marker and I had done this much so I've now added it's not quite the same again let's have a look it's probably half of what I've done last time again I've added that in and I have been trying to weave in ends as I go so I just, I've called this the Tropicana Blanket. And again, this is another um, Attic 24 free pattern. It's the Granny Stripe Blanket, blah, blah, blanket. I can't say it, blanket um, with the repeating colours again of Starcraft double knitting. So I'm using the colours Shrimp, Aspen, Fiesta, Sunshine and Magenta just on a five colour stripe repeat. This is getting pretty big now and it was a little bit too difficult to do in the house when it was hot. But I did find that um, once the sun was starting to set, um, it's getting light, not light, it's getting dark pretty late here now. So I can sit out until kind of nine, half past nine. Um, so it was nice to sit outside with it on my lap actually and do the next few rows. But I'm also finding 
that um, it's easier to actually sit and work on it in bed. It's easier to work on this in bed because you can spread it out and I'm not having to hold up the weight of the whole blanket which is something that I do struggle with. Um, I think I said last time that I had to buy extra yarn so I bought, I'd had one ball of each colour initially so I bought two extra balls of each colour and now that I'm getting into it I think I probably could have just got away with two so I'm a bit annoyed with myself that I might not need all three but it's better to be safe than sorry I'm sure and I think I could probably make something that would go with it. On both my crochet projects I've made quite a lot of progress with those two since the last episode. The only other thing that I've worked on since last time are my mystery neon socks and I have one finished sock. It's not been blocked yet. Um, I think last time I'd finished the foot rows and I just had to do the toe and I'm going to be honest it took me longer to do the toe than it really should have done this yarn hasn't got any softer in the toe it still feels quite it still feels quite hard compared to the to the the knee on the hand dyed stuff um, and I've decided I'm going to make the second sock as part of sock week the loving stitches sock week which is starts in two weeks I think it is it's the 10th of July is that two yeah two weeks so I'm going to make the second sock as part of that to motivate me because it took me so long to make this one so in the meantime I might block this because I've got the instructions written down it's not like I need them to match because I've got a written pattern so those are my active projects no finished projects this week apart from one sock i did do a tiny bit um i had to wait somewhere i took my knitting with me I, I did do a tiny bit on my harlow hat but it was literally one round maybe two so i didn't really think there's not really a great deal of progress with that so it's not really worth showing you um so those are all of my active projects for this episode <laughs> So my fabric challenge update, I was doing really well with my fabric challenge and I can't remember if I mentioned this last time but Sew Over It had a sale, um, I think it was 40% off a lot of their fabrics, that sale is finished now though, but I, so I bought, see if I can find a loose edge to show you, um, I bought some of this rayon viscose if I can hold it up it's all going to come unfolded this viscose um, I think it's called wild flower it was one that Lisa Comfort designed her well got some you know cost, um, it was one that Lisa Comfort commissioned um, and I originally had some of this when it was released as a crepe fabric um three years ago i had exactly the same the blue colorway there was a black there was a burgundy and a like a cream none, none of those really appealed to me so i had that on the crepe fabric and during the first lockdown i made a pair of megan nielsen tanya culottes and they the fit was horrendous on them that i have realized that i need to lengthen the crotch in um Megan Nielsen trouser patterns they were so uncomfortable they were to waistband even though I'd um lengthen the waistband to match my size um they were just awful so they went to the charity shop and I was a bit sad because I did really like this fabric but they've since released it as a viscose so I've bought I think I bought two and a half meters of the viscose um and I'm going to use it to make some carry trousers i want to make two pairs of carry trousers a plain pair that are more suitable for work and then i want to make this jazzy pair as well so two and a half meters have gone into stash and i'm hoping in the next couple of weeks that three meters can come out of stash this is a lady mcelroy cotton lawn that i bought oh could be two years ago could be three it's been pre-washed which is why it's folded up 
inside out that's my kind of system for knowing i'm sure there's three meters of this here i might have even bought it from sherwood's fabrics who seem to email me non-stop at the moment um but yeah there's three meters here and i'm thinking i'm going to make a my sotus dress by deer and doe patterns i think i mentioned this last time but i've actually dug out the pattern and i'll try and put a photograph in up here of me wearing the one that i've got made of crepe this is a cotton lawn and i would love this is why i chose this because i think i've got enough to do the skirt frill which i didn't last time because the skirt the skirt is a little too short on me so this is the fabric and i've also bought i really don't like sewing buttonholes um and these dresses are so loose fitting that i don't really need to undo the buttons to get it on and off i can just put it over my head so i've bought some of the prim color snaps now i've got some red ones that i used on a penny dress and i'm just looking i've got some lilac ones that i used on a different penny dress i've got some pale pink that um i used on a cushion cover and then i've got a red white and blue i think some of them are star shaped so I didn't really know which colour to go for, so I bought, oh, I bought some pink, green, and then I bought this mixed pack which has got two different shades of yellow, one's a bright yellow, one's more of like a canary yellow and one is orange, and thought these would go, one of these might go let's hold let's try and hold this up how wrong can this go you can't even see the green ones because my hands over them marvellous good times let's try it this way I should have thought about this so hopefully one of these still can't see the green one of these will go with this fabric fingers crossed I think on my previous my sotis dress the pattern says to put three buttons but um i've got quite a big bust so i prefer to have four and especially if i'm going to wear it to work i would wear something underneath it but you kind of want that coverage don't you really um so yeah let me know in the comments what do you think should i use which color do you think would go with this fabric i think i might have to make it up and then make my decision but yeah if you have any strong views let me know last time eight and a half meters had gone out since january the first another two and a half meters gone in but none has come out yet so hopefully i can persuade myself to do some cutting out which when the weather's hot is horrific isn't it <laughs> move on to the inspiration section of the podcast i have been feeling particularly inspired at the moment i think i said last time that i had gone off the idea of making socks you can see i've got my summer sock camp t-shirt on and on the back it's got the um it's from the crazy sock lady it's got the magic loop cabin logo on the back as well i don't know if you can see it because of my hair hopefully you can um yeah so i've got my um summer sock camp t-shirt on today and i am starting to feel a bit more the vibe of making socks i'm hoping later on to wind up some yarn to make the twin stitches design daphne sock which has got a lace pattern on the front i think i'm going to follow the pattern as it is rather than try and adapt it for perfect fit but i am going to adjust the cuff and use a lower number of stitches and a stretchier cast on so hopefully i'll have a new cast on to show you next time like i said summer sock week is coming and i'm hoping that my battery's gonna go sock week is coming and i'm hoping that i can finish the second sock um of the mystery neons as my sock week challenge so since last time i have received my other set of stitch markers we've got a um they're all easter themed so we've got an easter egg nest then a hot cross bun and a slice of simnel cake here as well which i don't know if you get that in america 
there you go so i've got my stitch marks i'm hoping i'll be able to use those um in my upcoming sock knitting projects i also got my sock week goodies so i've got a, a t-shirt a bit like the one that i'm wearing with the it's pink but with the sock week logo that was from the spreadshirt i think it's spreadshirt shop and i also got from stitching plaza um the bag oh i just love it just chilling it's amazing so i'm going to put my sock week socks in here and i also got this yarn holder because the one that i knitted was rubbish so this was also from stitching plaza it's got my mystery neon sock yarn ready for sock week in there as well so i'm gonna put that in there now to remind me and the last thing that's been inspiring me at the moment just move my sock week t-shirt out of the way is i got the latest black elephant gilmore girls set i have the winter part came in march and i've now got the spring set it's beautiful i'm hoping to use the whole collection so i'll have 20 skeins mini skeins in total to make a shawl or something like an advent kind of pattern um but i just found that these were really beautiful yarns if anybody's got any ideas of what i could make with these minis then i would love to know because at the moment i'm a bit unsure i think i've seen the dust of snow wrap which looks like it could be good for this as well i think that is it for this week's podcast short and sweet um i don't really have anything else to share um i really do need to cut down on the purchases now though um and start actually using stuff up hopefully i will have cut out my minette dress the next time i not my minette dress at all that's nonsense i will have cut out my myostotis dress the next time i do my podcast and we'll have a bit more progress to show you um I hope you enjoyed this shorter podcast and I will see you next time. Bye.